SeaWorld was the first facility to successfully breed killer whales, and it had taken 20 years from when they were first being captured until the first surviving calf was born. In the 35 years that have followed, this field has improved vastly to the point where they actually outperform wild whales. SeaWorld has had 31 killer whale calves born in their parks, and only three of these were not viable, meaning they died before six months of age. There has also been a total of four miscarriages and seven stillbirths from 1986 to 2010, meaning that three quarters of pregnancies have been successful. A recent study in the wild showed that only one third of pregnancies in the southern resident killer whales led to a live birth. There are also numbers on infant mortality, meaning calves born alive but dying before six months of age, and they show that up to 50% of all killer whale calves born in the wild die within six months. At SeaWorld, since their first birth in 1985, this rate of calves surviving birth but dying within six months has been only 9% or a total of three calves ever. Marineland Antibes has a mortality rate of 0% out of their six live-born calves, and Kamigawa SeaWorld has had six calves survive, with only their first dying back in 1995, making it a mortality rate of 14%. A common misconception bandied about is that wild whales mature at the age of 15, and so a zoological whale giving birth before that age would be some unnatural rape on nature. In fact, it's the average age a female has her first surviving calf. The average age of first birth in the wild is 13 years, and since killer whales are pregnant for roughly 17 months, they first become pregnant at the age of 11 or 12. On average, not the earliest. Out of a sample of 88 wild females, 58% had their first calf before the age of 15. In human care, this average age of first birth is at the age of 12, only one year less than in the wild. This may also have to do with a difference in ecotypes, as the figures are from the Pacific Northwest, while SeaWorld's whales are mainly Icelandic. Kalina was an outlier, becoming pregnant at the age of six and having a healthy calf who's still alive to this day and now a father and grandfather when she was just seven and a half years old. She gave birth the year she turned eight, and there is at least one similar case known among wild whales. I-92, in the northern resident community, had her first calf the year she turned eight, same as Kalina. Both are outliers in rare cases, but it shows that there's nothing unnatural about early pregnancy and birth in these animals. And how could you actually force an animal to become pregnant before they're sexually mature? Or force them to mature earlier? The average number of calves each female has is also very similar to the wild, in fact only slightly lower. Out of a sample of 114 females, the wild ones that are dead or postmenopausal had an average of 3.8 calves, while the captive ones had 3.4. The wild ones that are still alive and fertile had an average of two calves, the captive ones 1.8, the total average 2.9 calves per female. In human care, it's 2.8, so they are by no means overbred. These animals mate when they feel like it, and as dolphins, they are very sexually open, and it's normal social play for them. Some people usually counter with the fact that the whales are artificially inseminated, of the 31 successful births at SeaWorld, only four or five have been conceived through artificial insemination. Nikai was the first, and he was the first calf his mother had had in 10 years. The second was Kohana, Takara's first calf at the age of 11. And the third and fourth were also Kasatka's and Takara's calves, eight and four years respectively since they last gave birth. All the rest were conceived naturally, and there is no way you could possibly force a three to six ton animal to have sex against their will. Females, as you remember, are dominant among killer whales, and rape does not exist. The reasons for artificial insemination is not to have to move animals around as it causes stress and splits up social structures, while at the same time avoiding inbreeding and it's frequently done in virtually all animals. It's common in everything from pedigree dogs to zoo animals, not to mention the meat and dairy industry, which could not function large scale without artificial insemination. People who think it is somehow disgusting that trainers stimulate the male whales to ejaculate, what's the difference between making a bull or a stallion mount a fake animal to have his semen collected, or a veterinarian, quite frankly, jerking off a dog? That's how it's done. 
It cannot remotely be considered rape because the whales are trained to participate with positive reinforcement, can choose to leave at any moment, and unlike humans, don't even have an inkling that sex or genitals have anything to do with shame. It's hardly different to them from being touched anywhere else on their body, and the experience is made 100% positive for them. For females, the procedure is far less sexual, as she simply has tubes inserted into her genital slit. And it can't be any different experience to her than any other veterinarian procedure. The idea that is that the whales plan and decide when to have calves, but frankly, only humans can do that. Again, killer whales, like other whales and dolphins, are very sexual beings and have intercourse for every and any reason. Another common misconception is that inbreeding is rampant among whales in human care. Out of the 95 known pregnancies conceived in human care, a total of six have been at all inbred. Kohana mated with her half-uncle Keto, genetically as close as a cousin, and had two calves. Close breedings can and should be avoided, but this level of inbreeding is still legal and acceptable in many human societies, not to mention other animals we care for. Wiki, at Marineland Antibes, had a son with her half-brother Valentin, and Katina had a daughter, Nalani, with her son, Taku. Nalani was conceived when Taku was 11 years old and born soon after he turned 13. SeaWorld claimed he became mature earlier than they expected and he was moved to Texas two months after his daughter's birth to avoid it happening again. It's doubtful that this is completely true as Taku had already fathered a calf, Trua, born exactly one year before Nalani. The remaining two inbred pregnancies resulted in miscarriage and stillbirth, one at Marineland, Canada in 2004 when Neosha got pregnant with her father Kandu 7, and the other at SeaWorld in 2006 when Una mated with her half-brother Kiyukit.